These are field microgreens. I wrote about them in my book. Enough people have asked in the comments recently, so I deliver. Decided to make a video about it. This video is going to be over the span of 11 days, because that's how old these pea shoots and sun shoots are. I'm gonna harvest them today, but we're gonna go back in time and I'm gonna show you how I planted them and everything. But just a few comments on field microgreens. I used to do these a lot on my farm, like in the early days, I'm talking six years ago. I did them a lot because I didn't have a lot of nursery space and it was a really cheap, quick and inex it's inexpensive. Well, cheap is inexpensive, but it was a cheap way to do these without all the infrastructure of, you don't need a lot of potting soil, well, very, very little. We're gonna use a little bit on here, but we don't really need much. You don't need to have the nursery flats. You don't need to have a greenhouse and all that infrastructure. You can do them right in the ground. They don't need any soil amendments. They can grow in just pretty much any kind of dirt. It's just a medium. And, um, you know, they take a little bit longer. So these ones are 11 days old and uh, microgreens or at least pea shoots and sun shoots that we're growing in the greenhouse right now are, are on eight day cycles. So these took a few extra days longer to mature, but uh, I'm going to harvest these now, but we'll go back in time first and explain how we planted them and how we got to here today. Okay. So what we're starting with is a bed that's been prepped again. You can rototill it. It doesn't matter. It's just soil that's somewhat soft and level. That level is really important. I've got some seed. I've got some pea seed that's been soaked. I've got some sunflower seed that's been soaked. Both of them been rinsed. And I've got some radish seed. So all of these, this, this amount of seed is the equivalent of around four and a half flats of microgreens. So I'm referring to my 10, 20, one inch deep flats. I plant all my microgreens in those. If you have my book, I list all the seed densities for at least for sun, pea and radish in there. So just take that and quantify it by whatever square footage you're going to plant. So just like when we're planting microgreen flats, after we plant them, we stack them and then they germinate underneath each other. That weight helps them germinate. And then once they pop up, you take the flat off and then the microgreen grows in another four or five days depending on the time of year, of course. So we're mimicking that same thing outside. So this, this is what I call a bed board. So I, again, I wrote about all this in my book, but uh, this is a bed board and it's 26 inches wide by three feet long. So effectively it's 4.68, I believe is the exact number equivalent of square footage in flats. So there's, you know, 900 and something square inches here divide that by 200 square inches, which is the size of your flat or whatever your flat is. And then that will give you the multiplier that you're going to plant your seed according to. So for example, I plant, normally I'm planting 332 grams of seed per 1020 flat. So I'm multiplying that by 4.68, this square footage. And then that's going to give me the amount of seed that I have. It's somewhere, it's like 1.5 kilos of seed I'm going to plant. So I'm going to take this board put it on my soil and I'm going to tamp it down to get a nice flat surface. So I'm going to plant three varieties here. So I'll lay down two other of these boards. So one's going to be pea, one's going to be sunflower, one's going to be radish. All right, now we take the boards off Now we got a nice, flat surface there. So we'll start with the pea and we're just going to spread it around. I'm going to use my hands just like I do with the garden flats or the uh, microgreen flats. Spread it around, get it nice and even. Do the next one. So radish goes on dry. So you need to just be a little bit more, you can't really spread this with your hands. So you just gotta be consistent with how you sprinkle it around or try to be as consistent as you can. Get a nice even spread. So 
So to finish them off, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cover them with a layer of soil. So this is just my microgreen planting mix. It's called Sunshine 3. It's nothing special. You can pretty much use anything. You could use really finely sifted soil to cover it too, but I have really clay soil here, so I don't have any finely sifted soil around. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of this to cover the seeds. So I don't do that when I'm planting indoors. And um, this is just something I figured out doing this through trial and error that I got a better germination and a higher yield when I was doing this with just, with, with putting a little bit of soil on. I found that just the board itself didn't um, keep enough moisture in. I think that probably has something to do with the fact that these are in the weather, these are in the sun. So the, the, the sun's gonna be beating down on that board and it's gonna be warm, which is gonna cause things to dry. So I'm thinking that the reason it works better with the soil is because it buries them in there and um, allows them to germinate better. So I'm gonna spread this soil on, I'm gonna pack it down again, and then I'm gonna water it in heavily and then put the boards on, put some weights on the boards and then let it sit for four or five days and then we'll uncover it and then it'll be in the sun and grow and we'll harvest it around then. So uh, in my greenhouse, uh, in the summertime, I'm on eight day cycles. So if I plant my microgreens on a Wednesday, I harvest them on the next Thursday. Outside, even though it's really warm, it might be a little bit longer just because the temperatures aren't quite as stable outside as they are inside, but we'll, we'll see. So it doesn't need to be completely buried just enough that it gets between the seeds and holds moisture. That's really what we're looking for here. So that was three liters of soil. That's the equivalent of one microgreen flat of soil. Now we cover them back up. I'm just gonna stamp it out to flatten down, create a nice firm surface and then push that seed into the soil. That's gonna help it germinate. And we'll put the boards back on once we water it, but I'll just use this one to pack them all down. Now I'm gonna hand water these in very heavily. A nice soft sprayer is the best way to do this. One thing I love about these boards is that you can walk on your beds. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna pull a bit of dirt up on the sides so that less air comes in on the sides because if it, you know, your beds have a tendency to be slightly raised, even if they're not technically raised beds like mine are, but they're always gonna be slightly raised because when you prep them, you fluff up the soil and so the shoulders of your beds will always dry out a little quicker than the stuff in the center. So to prevent that, I'm just gonna pull up some dirt. Now that's essentially it. I'm gonna put some weights on these, maybe a row bag or two each, and they will lift that weight up when they germinate. So that's it. We'll check back in a few days and see how these do. Thanks. Planted these on Sunday. Oh, oh wow. It's pea, sunflower. That's radish. So that, that's planted dry just the same way we did in the greenhouse the other day. So I'm just going to take that off. They like just kind of rub this around. I'm going to plant it again. So you're going to see exactly how I did this. These will be good to go in four days to harvest. So we planted these ones as part of the five day workshop last week and I soaked the seed, planted them at the workshop and now I'm uncovering them. That little bit of soil, it just helps germinate them better in the middle and so I just uncover them a little bit and then in a couple more days they'll turn into these. In fact, about four or five more days they'll turn into these. So one thing when you're doing field micros is that 
you are dependent on the weather. Whereas when you're doing microgreens in the greenhouse, you can control the environment and get a consistent days to maturity. So inside our greenhouse, we're on eight day cycles from seed to harvest. So we plant Wednesday, we harvest Thursday. Out here, it's just a little bit longer, like a couple days longer. As I walked away from the camera and said that these were not uh, a little over eight days, I was actually incorrect. The radish is exactly eight days. I seeded these on Monday, early Monday morning. So these, and it's Tuesday today, so the radish is ready to harvest. The sunflower and pea are still gonna need at least one or two more days. So unlike microgreens in the greenhouse, we need to wash these more extensively because they, they get splashed from the dirt, but harvest them is more or less the same. In fact, I'm using the same knife. So we'll harvest this little chunk and take a look at what the yield is. One thing that is clearly different about field microgreens than microgreens in the greenhouse is that they are a lot beefier. The cotyledons are a lot bigger than the ones you grow in the greenhouse. So that's one noticeable difference. So the sunflower and the pea have taken a little bit longer than the radish. That one was quick on an eight day cycle. So I've already, already harvested that one. We washed it and weighed it. And uh, the yields are close to what you get to a flat. It's, it's almost comparable. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these pea shoots. I harvest these the same way I do in the greenhouse, just with my chef's knife and they harvest nice and easy these you know when you're doing them in the field you might have to wash them especially with the uh you know i always i always wash my uh sunflower and radish shoots but the pea shoots we normally don't wash but in the case when they're in the ground you might need to wash them because you get dirt splashing up on them when you water them so we have to hand water these we don't uh irrigate them. If I had overhead irrigation here I could, but drip irrigation wouldn't work for these. One thing that I immediately notice the difference of when I'm doing field micros opposed to micros in the in flats is that they grow a lot thicker and you know maybe that's to do with the soil itself. I'm not exactly sure the reason. I mean that would make sense to me that they for some reason you know they have access to more water and more of the natural cycles of things growing so they would grow more like they do in their natural environment. So they probably grow bigger. So that would make sense. But with these sunflowers, they certainly are huge. All right, well, I've got those harvested and that's field microgreens in a nutshell. You know, uh, you don't have to see me wash them. You guys have seen me do videos on that before, but you know, in conclusion, field micros are great during your main season. You know, they're not gonna work on the shoulder season in the early spring or the late fall, or certainly not in the winter, at least in a, in a northern climate like we're in. So they're great in the sense that they're cheap. It's, uh, it's fast to do. You don't need anything. You can even sprinkle the soil on top. You can just use dirt. I just use, the, the peat that I have because it's a finely, it's fine and I don't have to have a finely a ground dirt which I don't have here. I've got really clay based soil but so they're, they're cheap and easy to do. Again, only in the main season. So I hope you guys have found that helpful. Talk to you later. Yeah.